go with my mom, I go with my grandmother. But I often heard people say, Oh, uh, you show impartiality uh, between your children and your daughter. Sometimes, there yeah, were well, parents, you know, back in my day, uh, my grandmother, you know, she was, you know, on the Caucasian side, and, uh, you know, she may have uh, uh, two family sisters. <laughs> I you know my, my, my dad was from uh, Long Island, and uh, so she was like skin, and she she didn't let me watch she didn't keep it no secret that she loved, that she loved color. She was, she was, now Eric was not as dark as I was, but he was not white, but he just was he had better hair than I had. And so she used to show him that she loved him. If she wanted to give him bread, she'd give him a larger slice than she gave him. You know, and I was older than him, I two years older than Eric. And, uh, uh, and I remember when she actually was born, and she saw she had such an overwhelming baby. I said it was a beautiful baby, but it wasn't she had any looks that dog. It was she had his color. <laughs> I had a sister, I have a sister now, I have a sister in 81, my wife was born, that's my baby sister. And uh, she had my complexion. And, and mom left, mom, uh, my grandmother, didn't get a kid while she was born. Now, as many of you met her about I mean, and then, so she would make breakfast for all of the kids. And she said, my wife, make you better make some breakfast for that one over there. <laughs> That's the thing, but she, she was just prejudiced, you see. But she, she was um, uh, one of those people. But this is what was happening here in Jacob's house. When Jacob made that coat for his son, that sent a shock wave of prejudice through the mind of the siblings. They saw this as partiality. And they developed a tremendous disdain for their baby brother. It says in verse 11, And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. Let us pray. Father, thank you once again for this opportunity. Thank you, God, for the privilege and place. Thank you, Lord, for each one here today. God and our Father, I pray your leadership and your directions upon us. Father, bless this gentleman here today. Have mercy upon us. Father, in every one of those Christ, I pray that they may come to trust you as their Lord and Savior. Father, those that are watching via Facebook and those who are here with us, I pray God for the pray for us here in North Carolina and Tennessee, that I am safely in their problems. We pray for them back home safely by the time we come. Now, how we live in your way now, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I read of an evangelist whose wife had died. During the time after his wife had died, even if he had two sons, two boys, he would go on these preaching trips. And when he go on the preaching trips, he had to get a babysitter to take care of his two boys. Whenever he go, would go away. But he had a custom of always bringing back a little present for his two boys. However, he came back home but had not bought a gift for the boys. It was on purpose. When they asked for their present, the father told them that he would take them to the store or to the shop. And they could choose anything what they want for him. He said, I mean, anything what I want. I mean, that was a great I believe Felix among those boys. When they arrived at the, uh, at the store, the first thing they saw was the candy counter. That's it. When they first stopped running to the candy, they said, We want candies. But the dad said, Boy, don't you think you should look around first? Just, just let's walk around the store. You may see something else. I mean, their eyes were glued on that candy jar. They didn't see nothing else, and they didn't want to see anything. He wanted candy, that was the kid's out. They decided that they wanted to buy those candy. Their father did not agree with them at this time because he had something else in mind. Then they went to the department part of the store and they saw some, uh, I don't know, in your time, if you ever buy, bought you cowboy uh, clothes. You know, I grew up in the time when cowboys and Indians was the main thing. And, uh, and, and, uh, I had me a cowboy suit one time and, and guns and everything else. So much so, you know, when I when I see it, but father was doing, I I when I bought one uh, a set of guns, I was in the bag with not, not a daylight, you know. Um, uh, and I didn't think she, she, she 
was right. You know, I, you know, I was just thinking as it was in those days. But these boys wanted that. When they saw that cowboy in a um, uh, suit, the guns and the whole nine yards, they said, we want that. Again, the father said to them, those boys, he said, guys, yes, let's look around for more. So they continued to shop. They spotted two brand new 10-speed bicycles at the back of the store. When they saw that, their eyes lit up. And uh, of course, they didn't say that their father didn't want them. They thought they were too expensive. But the father saw the gleam in their eyes. The father saw how they were looking at the bicycle. And he said to them, he said, boys, how would you like to have those bicycles? Man, that made their day. Those two boys, they, I mean, that they had a glee in their face. I mean, and a joy in their spirit. I mean, they were excited. They left the store with their bicycles. Let's say their father was not there. They would have left the store just with a probably a handful of men. Do you know that must make us amazing? see we got the picture. And so this morning I want to I want to preach on the subject God has something special for you. God has something special for you. There are times when we are unable to wait on God. We are so excited about getting what you want and what you need that you are not allowing your eyes to search for your heart to search for God's purpose. You see, that dad had intended to buy those bikes all along. Those two boys thought Kennedy would be the wonderful thing for, for them, but their father had something far more greater. They never thought about those bikes. I wonder what it is in your life that you are going after without asking God what is his will. What is his purpose? What does he think about us? God, our Father, has planned for us that we can not begin to imagine his works. You can see things that formulate our plans that we think would be wonderful, but God has something far more special, far more wonderful, far more greater than you and I can ever imagine. demonstrates four facts that you will find true as you travel the path that God has led for you now. If you can remember these truths, then no matter how dark the cloud, how desperate the circumstances, how diligent the, um, uh, the critics may be against you, you will always be aware of the fact that God has something special for you. No one can deny you of it when you let God have his way. Number one, the first thing about, you know, we have people who are low self esteem. I, I, I know a lot of people like that. I, I, mean, I, really, I mean that a lot of people. They don't think much about themselves, they, they don't think that they can do it. You must first think much about yourself. You know what I, I used to tell my children? Listen, we let no one choose you for a friend. You choose your friend. Have some esteem about yourself. Because there are, there are people who will choose you just to put you down. To get you on their level. I'm not saying you must look down on those other people. But be careful who you walk with. Be careful who you run with. Be careful who you sit with. My God used to say, when you speak with the dogs, you will get leaves. Didn't understand it then, but I do now. So first and foremost, number one, recognize that you are special. That's the first thing you must recognize about yourself. You want to say to yourself, I am special. Genesis chapter uh, 37, verse 1 to 
who was in the naked dwelt, in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generation of Jacob, those who began of being 17 years old, who feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bela, and with the sons of Zilpha, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Boy, you know, you know, that's like a younger brother or a younger sister. You know, he says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him full of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peacefully unto him. My brother did more hard. He was closed when he was a kid. He stood for his men. Now, when my will not talk with me, if, 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 if you don't ask him anything. He was scared of me. And anytime me and I go somewhere, I'm not going to send him with me. Sometimes when I know I'm going to do bad things, I don't want him to go. Because he didn't believe in life. And what I used to have to do is promise him this and promise him that. But look here, what I promised him when he get back home, mommy say, what else did you say? Mommy said, now, if you don't tell the truth, I will beat you. Oh, he didn't get me. He still let people go for it. He still let people live. Many times people will see this and say, but I see this is his sin. And he will tell mommy all the truth, what I did. And that's why I didn't like him to go with me. Because this was Joseph. Any any time his father wanted to know what his brother was doing, he called. He said, "Look, we're going out there checking on the boys. See what they're doing. When he get back, what they're doing. Every bad thing what they done, he would tell his father." So if you read the story of his life, it wouldn't take you long to notice that Joseph stood out from his brethren in his commitment and his character. Special. You're a special person. Being different is socially unacceptable. You need to let the world know that you are different. But you don't try to blend in. We are all born for God. That's one of our problems in our churches, in our society today. No one wants to be an all born. Everybody, they want to belong. You see, the, the popularity is the problem. When you begin to be like others and do like others, you soon find yourself in trouble. You need to be yourself. The world tells us that to get along, you must go along. You do this. It's not wrong to be wrong, crowd. This is one of the of our pieces of rain or loud cry of the world. Everyone wants to fit in, everyone wants to be accepted. Be different. I remember during my school years, there was the first few top students in school, Preston Ranger, Archie's good side, and Terry Hill, my best friend. Preston could beat me in everything. I hated him. No, he loved me not. I hated him because I couldn't come first. Boy, the day he graduated from school, that was the joy of my life. Now I can come first. Because he could beat me running. He, he, was, he, he, was, he was more smarter than me. I mean, anything I could do, he could, he could have done that. That's the way the world. See, the world don't like you when you're doing the right thing. The world hates you for nothing. Nothing that you've done. Keep on doing what you just be different. It's okay to be different. While the world calls us to conformity, the Bible gives us a far different message. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. I want to go to chapter 2, or third of chapter 12. So be different. Why? Because God made you different. If any man may question that you do it, the main reason why you would be different is because God is in you. That give us a Christian DNA. Make us different from the world. Every now and again, I would watch these um, uh, little things on TV where, well, you know, they're showing that these fathers deny and adopt their child or whatever it is. 
sometime, uh, the mother of had one, one, one time had this man for 37 years. He denied that this young, he was 37 years old. And he said, I'm going to be lying on that's not his job, because he was no good. But somehow, you know, I don't know how to, uh, with, with these organizations, or, 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 or organizations get a hold of, the, of them, and they give them money, they pay them money to come on national television. And so they all, they all, all both sides came on. The woman, she, she was insisting that he is the father. He said, I'm not the father. He never gave it a child's life. He didn't, he never, I mean, she wanted him to be her dad when she was younger. <laughs> Eventually they agreed to it. They went on. When the DNA test came out, the court came out, this, now the, yeah, yeah, what do you do now? He, he just got to pray now. Please don't. Don't let him be mine. <laughs> don't let him out. He did. So finally, they asked him, say, would you like to use the DNA? Is he on that? He went over there to see it. He said, oh, he said, that's not him. The only way you open it up, he was 110%. She said, but she got up, she walked, she said, You wouldn't never play with that again. You'll never see my children. She was bitter. You see. Now, of course, from a human perspective, good reason. He was adamant. And now I know your children. She said, Yeah, who bought me now? She said, Come on. Come on. My dear beloved, if it don't bother you, when you do wrong, something is wrong. You see, listen, the, the, um, uh, when you worship God, God gets on out of it. This ought not to be so in our life. Thinking of Daniel at the age of 17, listen, he took a stand that was the kind of social suicide when he decided that this is what Daniel is going to do. So what are you going to do? Say, my 
daddy, my mommy. You know why they they can call you mommy, that mommy, mommy, and daddy. You know why they could act like that? Because their parents make them feel special. Nothing is wrong with that. Sometimes, the whole, I used to stand up and say, my wife is a beautiful woman in the world. One of the guys used to look at me. I said, I love this bitch. I said, my wife is the prettiest woman in the world. To me, that's the step. She said, Have you always been special to you? That's your problem. Have you always been beautiful to you? That's your problem. I told the woman, Boy, what do you mean? <laughs> I, 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 I was looking at her one day, and she was wearing a mask. She got good shape. Oh, no. <laughs> as long as you get the mask on, you need the mask. That's what they are calling it. She is unique. She is complete. But you know she got a handsome husband. This guy, I, I, I want to say, what was he receiving her? Somebody with beauty eyes. And his eyes are beautiful. So, you know, he would like to stand up, stand up, stand up, and he put her against against my wife, and he said, she's more pretty than my wife, I have a problem. But maybe he will say that. You see what I'm saying? God has a special plan for your life. You will recognize that you are special. God has a special plan for you because you are special. Joseph burnt a tree and he told it to his brothers and they hated him yet before. This word tells us that in Joseph's dream, the Lord revealed to him that he was special. Told him the future. He did not give the future to his father, Jacob. To whom he promised that your name would be called Israel. He gave the promise to his son in this dream. God showed Joseph that one day all the resources that they were uh, that they would have all of the rulers that, that, that the world would have would come and bow down to him. Joseph said, I saw your sheaves about them. To my sheep, to my sheep, I was in the middle, and you were around me, and my sheep to the right, and yours bowed down. I saw the moon, the stars bowed down to me. Special. So much so that his brothers got upset. Because that their dreams had meanings. They said, You think you can be ruling over us? Someone said that his father rebuked him. Said to him, should me and your mom and your brothers come and bow down to you? Joseph did not know what this dream was all about, but Jacob knew. And Jacob didn't know how it was going to come to pass. Sadly, many people like the faith of the vision that God had given to them, the time when God has planned for their lives. God gave you a vision. Want to work in you, through you, around you, yeah, in a very unique way that you have to acknowledge your special, that you are special. You must accept the fact that you are special. Then you realize that you are special, people don't eat. People don't want to go to the way. Genesis 27, verse 19 to 20. They said unto one another, and they said, and they said one to another, Behold, this dream of come. Come now, therefore, let us slay him, let's kill him, and cast him into some pit. And he will save some evil beast and devour him, and he that and, and we will and we shall see what will become of his prey. Let me tell you something. God is in control. No evil form against you will prosper. You can try to stop you all you want. You cannot stop this. God, this is not me. They thought that they could stop it. <laughs> they 
that man, the Holy Ghost, who lacks the faith and the vision and will tell you that your dream are either are, are inconvenient, inconceivable, impracticable, or impossible. I'm telling you, God said in God's word. History reports. You know where the ground was? Alexander Graham, their father, the Lord, he called the telephone and told him. Nobody would believe that. The famous British psychologist, uh, physic, Lord Calvin said, radio has no future when it was being invented. British royal astronomer George Fidel said, computer is absolutely foolishness. He said it's worthless. In 1899, Charles H. Buell, director of the United States Patent Office, made this statement, and I quote, everything that can be invented has been invented. He was so convinced of that that called President McKinley and he asked him to abolish his job because he said there's no need for my job anymore. He was an inventor. Thought that he was going to be a better. Well, the very next year, our president, he sent the first human voice over radio. When he said radio, when 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 1901, the first Mercedes automobile was invented, was constructed. 1903, you know history, the Wright brothers were successful in their invention of the airplane and they flew. 1904, the full electric cell was developed. All of this only five years after Mr. Duell said nothing was left to be invented. God has some special people. You can't stop special people. You can try your best. You can do all you want. You can't stop them. I like what Solomon said in Proverbs 29 and 18, where there is no vision, so the people perish. God has a plan, had a plan for Joseph's life, and God has a plan for your life, and God will sustain you of enduring the storms and the battles of life as rain seems to be on force. See that it will never come to pass. First of all, recognize the perspective, number one. Number two, recognize, you know, um, uh, that you have, God has a special plan for you. And thirdly, there are special challenges for you. He has some challenges that you're going to face that nobody else can endure. I don't plan to read all of these challenges that Joseph had to go through. But in the beginning, it says in verse number 18, when they saw him far off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. He had to challenge that. His life was in peril. They wanted to kill him. Then after a while, another one said, he says in verse number 20, Come now therefore and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say some evil beast had devoured him. And we should, and we should see. What shall become? And we shall see what will become of the traitors. I said, the world, the group, your group there, yeah, I mean, I will test the silence you, but I'm saying to you, when you follow with all my way to knowledge and he shall direct thy path, the world, no one can stop you. It might not look possible. Look at verse 22. And we will say unto them, share no blood. Cast them into this pit. Is that it's in the wilderness, and they no hand upon him that he might rid now his plan was to rid him and to take him back. We will say, Father, rid him out of their hands and deliver him to his father again. But Satan was still working. God was still teaching. Satan thought he had it under control, but God was in the lead. It says. Verse 26, Judas 
say about this brother? Well, what can I say with this thing? Oh, brother, I can see this brother. Come, let us send him to the Ishmaelites. Let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brethren were content. We, we, we had, I mean, we had, they had, they had a great plan. This plan had come to fruition. They said, we can have some money. And they'd be better of the dreamer. Listen, this was a plan that was conceived in the heart of those who hate to see those special people lose of God. We can't stop nothing when God has blessed. God blessed the man from church to church. Says, his brother had a plan to take him back and bring him to his father, but can you imagine? You will return unto the pit. Your ghost was not in the pit, and he went. His clothes all, he thought that they killed his brother. Now, what am I going to do? He's been the oldest brother. How am I going to tell dad what happened to his son? He was so, he said, number 36. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, officer of Pharaoh, and a captain of the guard. That was Joseph. Verse 18, his brothers conspired against him. Verse 21, he is thrown into the pit. Verse 28, he was sold to a, uh, in, into slavery. And verse 39, he is caught the abuse of rape. Now he is, he is into slavery. And now part of his wife wants to go to bed with him. He rejected her. She grabbed the hole of his coat and left it in her hand. He was just forsaken by his family, forgotten by his friends, and frustrated by his behavior. My father said that, ask me the question, shall I and your mom and your brothers come and bow before you? And here I in prison. Sometimes when you get there, God, I need to go. You got to go through some stuff. You got to face some challenges. But God will see to that you reach your potential. Please remember, all these things that happened to Joseph was just part of God's plan for his life. Genesis 50 and 20. Hear what Joseph said. But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good to bring the past as it is to stay to save much people alive. Finally, they recognize that Joseph is a special person. They have listen, for some 12, 15 years, Joseph was considered dead. God had in there, he wanted it to be that Joseph was not dying in Egypt, the whole world would have probably died of famine. Listen, Pharaoh had a dream. The astrologers, the smart men, the magicians, they were called into the of the dream, and they could not. The wife in jail, the butler had a dream, the baker had a dream, and they went to Joseph, and Joseph called the butler. What the said to the captain said, you will get your job back. When you get your job back, remember me. The bank had a dream. Joseph said, you know what happened to you? You will get executed. Do you know the baby was executed? Do you know the butler was released? And the butler forgot about Joseph until the king had another dream. And the king got the play and said, if you all here tell me what the dream is, then the butler remembered. Well, sometimes you know God has a job on memory. And he told him of this Hebrew who told him that he was going to get his job back and told the baker what was going to happen to him. He came to get it. Joseph came and said, Joseph said, the seven years, there'll be seven years of plenty, there'll be seven years of hot wine because the king dreamt of these cows who were. Flush. Everything I made in it. I mean, they look so good. Many of you know, these other seven cows were so lean. Well, you're going to have so many years of plenty, <laughs> so many years of famine. And this is what needs to be done. And the king told Joseph, Pharaoh told Joseph, I'll tell you what happened, go do a job. Joseph, would take, Joseph went to prison for nothing he had done but for being special. He put him in charge. That's why we have verse number 20 in chapter 50 of Genesis. 
But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. You see, Joseph is the Old Testament illustration to the one of the New Testament of our, our, our greatest promise, Romans 8 28. All things work together for good.
Thank you. 